I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions. Today I'm going to be walking you through MailChimp's Journey Builder. That's their automations tool, how to send automated emails. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I put out all sorts of tutorials on MailChimp and email marketing. Sign up for my email list, of course. To start out, I'm gonna head over here to automations. Now MailChimp is going to start us off with some recommendations and you can also go to, and you can also go to pre-built journeys over here. where again, they will have more, which will give you all kinds of ideas and starting places. For the sake of this, we're gonna start from scratch. Go ahead and name it. You can change this name later if you need to. Make sure that you are starting it in the correct audience. It is a bit complicated if you need to move an automation from one audience to another one. Um, maybe you only have one audience, in which case, good job. We are going to pick our trigger. This lists all the different ways you can have people added to your automation. Keep in mind that automations work in the future. So if someone currently has a tag, they will not be added to this automation. They get added to the automation when they go from kind of status of no tag to status of tag. Hopefully that makes sense. I have a separate video going a bit more in depth about all of the different trigger options here. For the sake of this video, I'm going to go with the most popular one, which is a welcome email. So we're gonna click on this one, signs up for your email list. Over here, you can decide whether you want it to send when you import contacts through a CSV file or not. If you decide to click this, just be very aware that you are doing that. And we can also add filters to this trigger. So maybe you only want it to send to people who come in through a specific landing page, or you wanna exclude people who come in through a specific landing page, or you wanna exclude people with a specific tag, whatever. This is your second opportunity to filter people that are coming into this automation. This top trigger here might be a wider trigger that you then specify with your filters. We have our trigger all set and we're going to start building our journey. Over here are all of our journey points. The most used ones are of course, send an email and time delay, which is what puts time in between your emails and the if else. So if else can sort things for you. I'm going to start building in here a little bit. We're going to send an email right away. You're going to rename this. Name your emails in a way that makes sense, just for your own future brain's sake. And then we will set up this automation with our to field and our subject line. And right here in the schedule is where we decide the window that it is able to send within. So again, we can't pick a specific day and time. For a welcome email, we're gonna have it send right away. But you also can choose not to send it on weekends if you're a business that only works on weekdays. Or if you send a weekly or monthly newsletter always on Tuesdays, you can choose not to have your automated emails send on Tuesdays because then they would be doubling up. You also can choose the time window that they get their emails. Again, the first welcome email, maybe you want them to get it right away and so then you would pick as soon as possible. Or you know that your customers are more likely to respond to emails if you email them in the evening. And then you will come over here and you will create your email. If you need help building your email, how to design an email, I have another video for that. So I'm gonna leave this part here for now. All right, next up, let's add another journey point. And here I would add a time delay. So let's say we'll give them two days. And then just for argument's sake, this is not a tutorial on how to do a welcome email. I just wanna show you all the different things. We're going to do an if else. So I like to keep if else's with the positive outcome being a yes. So we're going to say for this one, email interaction, did they open that previous email? And that's gonna give us a split here. So two days later, if they open the email, they're gonna go this way. And if they didn't open the email, they're going to go this way. Let's look at another journey point here. So then maybe I would send another email. And actually, while we're here, let me show you the copy and paste. We can copy this one. Oh, and we're gonna paste it down here because if they didn't open it, we're gonna give them another chance to. We'll just change up the subject line and send it to them again. Okay, now let me just throw in some of these other journey points so you can see what they do. A percentage test is so you can A-B test your emails. So you could have them go in two different directions and you can change how this is 
weighted, split up. The next one is a weight trigger. So for this one, it will wait until something happens. So it could be that they purchase something or they order something, and then it will kind of speed up the pace of things. So maybe if they open this resend, then they will move to the next stage faster. But if they don't open it, you could just have them end there, kind of get stuck there, or you can set a time limit. So if they don't open it, then three days later, they'll move past this point. Let's see what else we've got here. All right, we did all of those. All right, send an SMS. So those are the text messages. Web hooks is a way to code things so that information gets sent to another platform. For instance, I have an automation that gets sent to Slack. I have a video on that too. If you wanted a Slack message to be sent anytime someone gets to a certain point here, it can send a survey. Down here, we have the ones that are going to update their profile in different ways. So we can have it add a tag. You would choose which tag it adds. It could also remove a tag. We also have adding to or removing from a group unsubscribing, updating a specific field in their profile, and archiving contacts. So now we've set up our little fakey, unhelpful automation here. Um, as someone flows through here, once they get to the last step, they will exit the automation and they are out. And based on this over here, they cannot re-enter. Now, if you have an abandoned cart email or something like that, you would want them to be able to go through that automation again, but with a welcome email, you would not. Now they don't have to end at the bottom. We can have them rejoin a different branch of this. So you shouldn't be repeating emails throughout this automation. You should be having them tack back on. So for instance, if you did resend this first email again, you then want them to get the second email, right? So instead of contact exits, we're going to choose move to another path. And we'll go back up here and we'll move them here. And then the folks who have gone through this side, we'll rejoin over here. Couple little other things over here. Um, in settings, if you wanted to add people manually to your automation or remove them, you can do that here. This is where you name your journey. So if you wanted to change the name, you could do that. Instead of sending your test emails like one email at a time, like you do in campaigns, you can send them to yourself all at once. So this would send all three emails or I could choose which ones. And then we can turn it on. If you did need to edit your journey in the future, you're going to find it under all journeys here. You can click to see your report, but you can also view your journey. Right now it's active and it's still sending. If you wanted to make an adjustment, you would pause it, change what you need to change and turn it back on again. There we go, that is the overview of MailChimp's customer journeys. Of course, there's so much more to learn. Please ask questions in the comments and check out my other videos and sign up for my email list. <laughs> I'll see you around.